Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to compare all three of these mesh Wi-Fi 6E systems to each other, starting with the TP-Link Deco XC75, to the Google Nest Wi-Fi Pro, to the Eero Pro 6E. Product links will be in the description box below if you guys are interested, and while you're down there, smash that subscribe button if you guys enjoy these types of videos. Now, I'm going to talk about their specs, speed test and wired and wireless backhaul, range test, and at the end, I'm going to give you guys my opinion on which one is worth getting and why and for what situation because it's never an easy answer of this is the best it really just depends on your situation before we get into the numbers let's talk about my testing environment starting with my wi-fi 6 devices so i used a combination of my iphone 13 pro max and 14 pro max both of which are wi-fi 6 devices both of which give very similar speeds to each other the same is true for my pixel 7 pro and galaxy s22 ultra and even my older pixel 6 pro all of which are Wi-Fi 6E devices and gave very similar numbers to each other. So, now let's talk about these two concepts, wireless backhaul and wired backhaul. So, what do those mean? Well, when you get a mesh system like this one or the other two, you have two ways of connecting them. One is wired backhaul, otherwise known as Ethernet backhaul, which means if this one is hooked up to your modem, this one is acting as the main router. So even though physically both of these just so happen to be routers, only the one hooked up to your modem is acting as the router. The other one is acting as an extender or an access point or a node or a satellite. Different manufacturers call them different things, but it's basically not a router anymore in the same network. So in the case of wired backhaul, if this guy sucked up to your modem via Ethernet to any one of these ports, because these are auto sensing ports, you would take another Ethernet port from any one of these to any one of these, and that would create a fast, stable network. And that's actually how I have mine hooked up. Now, if you have dedicated ports like the Nest Wi Fi, you actually have to hook up your modem to the globe and this becomes your main router. This one is now the access point, and then you would go from the arrows of this one to the globe of this one to create a wired backhaul network. So, the other way is called wireless backhaul. Now, wireless backhaul is very convenient because all you need to do is hook up this main one to your modem, and then the secondary one is just wirelessly talking to this guy. So this one is one or two rooms away. In my case, it's around 40 feet away or so. And just hooked up to power and you're good to go. And the cool thing is, even though this one is wirelessly connected to this, you can actually use any one of these ports to connect your devices and they will still have internet access, whether they're wirelessly connected to this or connected via wired. Starting with the Deco, this thing retails for $299 in the US for a two pack, which covers up to 5,500 square feet together. Now this is a tri-band mesh system. In fact, the other two are also tri-band mesh systems. So in that regard, they're the same. So all three of these mesh systems have a 2.4 gigahertz, a 5 gigahertz, and the new 6 gigahertz band, which is designed for Wi-Fi 6C devices. Now in the case of the Deco, you can actually use this new 6 gigahertz band as a dedicated wireless backhaul to increase the speeds of the secondary node if you're doing wireless backhaul and it actually does work, it does help. Now both of these are identical, so we'll just talk about one of them. So there are three auto sensing gigabit ports, meaning you can hook up your modem to any one of the three and the deco will automatically recognize it. And then you can hook up the other two to a switch or to a computer or something else that requires ethernet and again the deco will figure it out. And then we have the power port. Now the power plug itself is 100 to 240 volts and this is what it looks like. The speed rating is AXC 5400, which just happens to be the same as the other two mesh systems and it does include basic parental controls. If you want more advanced parental controls, it does require a subscription to their Home Shield Pro. When you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, assuming the mesh Wi-Fi can even go that fast which in my case this can because my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. So when I use my computer that's hooked up via ethernet to this thing, I get those speeds no problem. However, on Wi-Fi, that's a different story. So we got some normal speeds for download and okay speeds for upload and Wi-Fi 6E was right around the same, except it had better download. Now to find out the true performance of this mesh system, I need to do a local speed test server. So I make my computer into the server and I go from phone 
to router to computer. And for the wired and wireless backhaul, I go from phone to the secondary node, which then jumps to the main one, which then goes to my computer. And what this does is it really isolates the mesh system. So I'm no longer relying on my ISP or the public speed test server. And looking at these numbers for the single router configuration, they are way better, especially the Wi-Fi 6C. However, the funny part is Wi-Fi 6C can actually go faster than that, but because the ports on the Deco are limited to gigabit, it's actually being capped right under gigabit speeds. The wireless backhaul also did amazing for this, and yes, this is using the six gigahertz as a dedicated backhaul channel, and the wired backhaul basically gave essentially the same speeds as the single router configuration. Now, moving on to range tests, range will vary based on location. So if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around, a lot of other walls, all of this stuff can hurt your range. So this thing gave pretty good speeds at 20 feet away, which is inside my place. At 50 feet, I'm outside, still giving pretty good speeds. And it takes me all the way up to 300 feet, which is around 91 meters. So did very well considering the price of this mesh system. The Nest Wi-Fi Pro also retails for $299 in the US for a two-pack, which covers up to 4,400 square feet. It is a tri-band system just like the rest, and you get two ports instead of three. Now, both of these are exactly the same, so let's just talk about one of them. Now, these ports are not auto-sensing. They are dedicated ports, and they are gigabit ports. So, you have to hook up your modem to where the globe sign is, and if you want to hook up a switch or an Ethernet, or if you want to hook up this other Nest Wi-Fi Pro, you would basically have to go from modem to this globe and then from the left and right carrots or the arrows to the globe of this one if you were going to do wired backhaul. If you weren't going to do that, then you can use this port to go to a switch or something else. And you can actually have a switch in between this and still have wired backhaul. Now you get the power plug and the power plug is nice and compact and it is 100 to 240 volts. And I like the shape of this because they kind of matched it to the Nest Wi-Fi Pro. So pretty awesome there. Same speed rating and this thing has matter or will have it with a future firmware update. It's not something I use, but it's supposed to be the new universal standard for smart home hubs. If your smart home devices do require a hub, matter is supposed to basically encompass them all. Now, it's not something I use or need because my smart home devices, I actually like ones that don't require a hub. That way I'm not tied down to any hub or any mesh system for that case, but it's cool that it has it. It also supports thread. And this thing also includes parental controls. Now for the internet speed test, just like the Deco, I got full speeds when I was hooked up via ethernet to the router, or if I was hooked up to the secondary one, it was a wired backhaul connection. So it's important to note that. And the same is true for the Deco and the Eero. Now for the Wi-Fi devices, the downloads were normal, but a bit slower than the Deco. However, the upload speeds were a bit better than the Deco. So it's kind of a trade-off. And to the local speed test, we got some really good numbers for the single router configuration. And just like the Deco, Wi-Fi 6C can actually go faster, but because we're limited to the gigabit ports on the Nest Wi-Fi Pro, it was actually capped to right around there. Now the wireless backhaul wasn't quite as fast. I was a bit surprised it didn't get to the Deco numbers. Again, same speed rating. But the wired backhaul was really good, very solid numbers, just like the Deco. And the range test got all the way up to 250 feet, which is still very good considering the price of this thing. Finally, the Pro 6C, which retails for $4.99 in the US for a two pack and together cover up to 4,000 square feet. Now, right off the bat, this thing costs a lot more than the other two. However, it is worth noting that around the holidays and Prime Day and some of the other days, uh, a few times a year, I should say, Amazon does give some really heavy discounts on the Eero. So just worth noting. Now, this is a tri-band system just like the other ones. Both of these are also identical and we get two auto sensing ports and one of the ports is actually 2.5 gigabit so if you have internet speeds faster than gigabit right off the bat this is the winner compared to the other two that are actually limited to gigabit speeds and these are again auto sensing which means you don't even need to actually hook up to 2.5 gigabit if your internet's up to gigabit speeds you can actually hook up your modem to the gigabit and go from 2.5 to the other 2.5 and actually create a faster local area network, which will not improve your internet speeds at all. However, it should improve some local area speeds, assuming all your other devices are compatible. 
and we have a USB-C power supply, which I really like USB-C, and it is 100 to 240 volts if you guys are wondering. Same speed rating, this thing has Zigbee and Thread built in, and parental controls are not included, they do require a subscription. Now in the subscription, you do get a few extra features, but just as a heads up, parental controls are not included by default. However, one cool thing about the Eero, for those of you guys that are interested, this is the new Echo Dot fifth generation with the clock, and this thing actually has basically an Eero extender built into it. So on the Eero network, it detects this and then I can actually extend my network with this. Now, don't expect crazy fast speeds on this. This is really just if something's really at the edge of your house and it's getting a really, really bad signal, then this could kind of help, but don't expect this to be anywhere near as good as this. Now for the internet speed test, just like the other two, when I'm hooked up via ethernet, I get my full speeds, no problem. And the Wi-Fi devices are very similar in terms of the other two mesh systems. So give or take, a little bit slower on the download, a little bit better on the upload. Just depends what you're comparing it to, essentially. Looking at the local speeds, Wi-Fi 6 did well. However, Wi-Fi 6 is where it's starting to shine, going way faster than gigabit speeds, and that's thanks to its faster 2.5 gigabit port. So it's no longer being capped like it was on the Nest Wi-Fi Pro and the Deco XC75. So this is really where the Eero has the main advantage. But going to wireless backhaul, it didn't do so great. It just did normal. It was, I was expecting it to be better. Both of these did kind of poorly in terms of wireless backhaul speeds compared to the Deco. And finally, wired backhaul did well for both Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E. However, if you're wondering why did Wi-Fi 6E slow down so much compared to the single router configuration, the simple answer is there's only one fast 2.5 gigabit port. So the other port is gigabit, so you're now being capped because of that. And for range, Eero actually goes the furthest up to 320 feet or 98 meters, which is very impressive, especially considering Eero actually advertises the least amount of coverage square foot. So they advertise this to be at 4,000 square feet where the other two are more. For setup and configuration, all three are pretty easy to do. The Deco uses the Deco app, which is one of my favorite apps, very clean and organized, and gives you a decent number of options. The Nest Wi-Fi Pro uses the Google Home app, which I think is an added bonus, because if you have any Google Home devices, you probably already have the Google Home app, so you don't even need to download a separate app. You do it right in there, super easy to set up. However, you are a tad more limited on options compared to the Deco. And the Eero is kind of similar to the Nest Wi-Fi Pro. In terms of options, you are kind of limited. And the Eero uses the Eero app. Uh, very simple to use, very organized. Again, it's really more of a simplified approach. You can customize a few things, like you could set up the HCP and port forwarding, and maybe one or two other things, but it's kind of limiting. So if you're used to ASUS or something like that, none of these are give you the number of options ASUS does. But I would say from the three, I think the Deco gives the most number of options to customize. Now, which one is worth getting and why? Well, honestly, all of that depends on your situation. So here are some reasons to get the Deco. If you have internet speeds of up to gigabit, if you're planning on using wired or wireless backhaul, if you want some good range, if you want parental controls, if you want that additional port, it's a good solid mesh system for the price. The Google Nest Wi-Fi Pro is very similar to that, so a very good price up to gigabit internet speeds, includes the parental controls, and is very good for wired backhaul, but not so much for wireless backhaul. I mean, it's not bad, but not as good as the Deco in terms of wireless backhaul, but it's very well integrated with the Google Home app. I think it looks the nicest from the three, and you get the Matter Smart Home Hub, which is kind of cool. The Eero is the most expensive of the bunch, but it can handle faster internet speeds, and has really great range, so the best range from all three, and has solid wired backhaul performance. However, it does not include parental controls, but Amazon does do some really great sales throughout the year, so be sure to check those out. In my opinion, from these three, considering all the variables, I think the Deco is still my favorite pick for the best budget system. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.